going back to JB Reviews, I have this Toyota Tundra, and I wanted to get it weighed with our smallest trailer that we own. It's a 2022, I don't know what it is actually. I, <laughs> we have too much stuff now. I don't know the name of everything, but I think it's a mirror light. That's what it is. Gulfstream a mirror light. It's a 199 DD. We've had it now for about a week. We just picked it up, and I just haven't been looking at it because I have so much going on. So we're going to go take that to the cat scale that's about 45 minutes away. We're going to get this twin and tundra weight, but what we're going to do is I'm taking family with me, and we're going to load it up with some stuff too. Not heavy stuff, but just stuff that we definitely go camping with. Let's get into the video. Now watch this. Just gonna lift it up for me. Clearly don't want you to work hard. Lift it up for me. Super nice. Go. Let's go. I did tow this trailer with my wife's Wagoneer, and let's just say it real quickly. I would never tow a trailer with a SUV for a very long trip. Like, all jokes aside, and we aren't on the highway yet, so once we get on the highway, I'll be able to give you my feedback again. But when we had towed that, or when we had towed this little trailer behind us, it was it was definitely white knuckle. And it wasn't windy, it was just at high speeds. You could feel the trailer tugging that Wagoneer. And it's because of the shorter wheelbase. This truck has a longer one for sure. But I want to know in the comment section, before you guys see the numbers, do you think that we'll be almost at capacity? We'll find out here in a second. I really wish Toyota would give us a little bit more capacity. I would love to get a Toyota Tundra. After towing my black trailer, it'd be kind of nice to like have something like this to tow like those types of trailers, but your payload capacity is always gonna limit you and you're gonna see that in this video. So wifey, what do you think about the Toyota Tundra? It's nice. Yeah? Yeah, it's a really nice truck. I think so too. Is this a base model? No, this is actually, wow. It doesn't seem like a base model? I guess I'm so used to running boards. Ah. Uh, and it doesn't have that. This is a $61,000 truck. I think I would want running boards. Yeah. I do like the sunroof. Yeah. The screen's pretty cool. It's Not 14, my favorite. 14 inches right there. Yeah, a big old laptop right there. Yes. Um, I do like the wireless charging here. The inside's nice. It feels, you know, like you have everything, but it still feels like has that truck feeling. It doesn't feel right. as it doesn't feel as luxurious as other trucks we've driven. Like, well, you're, are you considering my Ram? Yeah. Yeah, the Ram. What about the GMC? Even, this the GMC, I think, has a nicer interior. Really? Oh, whoa! Wow! Wow! That says a lot. Now, this is not the highest trim level though, so no knock on Toyota. I mean, my GMC is the highest trim level, but they have a capstone and then they have a 1794 and they have a platinum too. So this used to be the highest one, but now they've really stepped up their game and really made these trucks luxurious. But to Hannah's point, 
this interior is nice but like I said earlier it's not the best it's not even close like there's a lot of trucks I'd buy over this interior if I can be completely honest alrighty so we made it well not quite yet but we're pretty much there we made it to this part of Utah where that loves fuel station is they have a cat scale so what I gotta do is I gotta fill up with some fuel you guys want to see the fuel economy you won't believe it actually you would believe it because this isn't surprising at all 11.3 mpg with this 20 foot rv not bad at all but yeah we'll go ahead and fill up with some gas and then what i'll do is i will get it weighed and then i'll show you guys the cat scale but before i do that let me go ahead and show you guys the numbers for the truck that way you guys have an idea of the payload and then we'll go ahead and go over the cat scale weigh in. <coughs> 85 is 365. I asked the owner if he used 91 or 88, and he said 85. So if he wants me to use 85, I'm gonna use 85. Save me some money too, right? Has anyone ever put diesel in their gas truck or vice versa? I almost picked up that diesel handle. I almost did. But uh, we're gonna go ahead and fill up. Let's see how much the cargo has transferred. Oh wow, this moved around a little bit. But there's no wheels under it, so that's why. But yeah, this thing probably weighs about 110 pounds. That's probably about 25 pounds. And this is probably about 80 pounds. So, yeah, about a little bit over 200 pounds maybe of cargo. Gas is so expensive and the fuel cost has gone up significantly too. 365, I think it was always down to like 319 or 309, something like that. If you're new to the channel, I figured I'll go ahead and show you guys the inside of this RV. I gotta fix this, by the way. This keeps swinging open. I'll fix this when I get home. But yeah, here it is. There's nothing in here. Like this stuff, this is all lightweight. There's no stuff in this RV. So I want you guys to keep that in mind. When I get this way, there's no water in the tanks, nothing. And like I said, this thing puts about 360 pounds of hitch weight on the truck. Has a nice bunk area here. And then the bathroom's out back. So the gray and black tank are in this area. You guys probably saw that refrigerator right there. Two burner cooktop. And the fresh water tank, oops, sorry about that. Fresh water tank is down here. They do have some lights for this area too. It's surprisingly warm inside of here too. It's not, or it's not warm, it's not cold though. But yeah, this little guy is gonna be a rental. And so we just spot it so we can make some extra income. And then if we don't wanna tow our fifth wheel, we can just use this little guy. Win-win. But yeah, we filled up about 40 bucks worth. I think we only drove like 150 miles, maybe 160 miles since the last fill up. And that might be a little high. But as I mentioned, here's the payload capacity. 1,390 pounds minus 22 pounds because of the accessories. This thing has a high GVWR at 7,365. Most trucks are like 7,000 to 7,100 pounds in this segment. And then here are the axles to front is 4,080 and rear is 3,860 pounds. All right guys, so I did reset the fuel economy. I'm gonna do a real world fuel economy run with you guys. So you'll see the actual number. So, so far I just reset, we're at six MPG. It's so funny, we're hitting the headwind now on the way back home. So we got like 11 and a half here, but that was on the computer and a lot of you guys don't really care to go by that. So we'll see what the difference is when we get to the next destination. So we have a gas station like a minute down from our house. So we'll go ahead and um, fill up there and then we'll do the math too so we've only driven two and a half miles and we have about 31 more to go so 20 foot travel trailer it's about 3,000 pounds a little bit over 3,000 pounds we'll see how it does something I would like for Toyota to let you do also I didn't mention this in another video but you don't know what gear you're in and I would like to know that I'm probably like in eighth gear i don't think this thing will let you go into um actually i'm not even in tow haul mode 
let's do something real quick. This is a good test. So I just put it into hall mode. So I'm probably in ninth or eighth gear because I'm hitting the headwind and I feel like it's keeping me in a little bit lower gear to keep me like in the broadband here. And when I towed my black trailer, I think it, it wasn't even in the eighth gear. I think it was probably like in sixth or seventh because I feel like I was like a little bit over 2,000 RPMs. I was actually about where it is right now. And by the way, if you haven't had a chance to, you should watch my video on my headlights for this truck. I did a nice walk around for the interior and exterior as well. And yeah, it might be something good if you are in the market for this truck. This truck does have the upgraded headlights. They're the projector style. And they do give you a lot of light on the road too, even when it's bright outside. We just got back to our neck of the woods. So I'm gonna go ahead and get some fuel. So we drove 32.8 miles, got 9.2 MPGs. So when we were driving south, it makes sense. We got like 11 and a half MPG and we got 9.2 on the way back. So there was a headwind on the way back. And I think that we were actually getting a tailwind on the way down. So we got a lot better in comparison, but let's go ahead and fill it up. Probably only be a few bucks and then I'll show you guys the gallons and we'll go ahead and do the math. All right, so let's top it off. There it is. Three gallons. That's 3.7 gallons, almost four. Just to drive 32 miles. Towing a really small travel trailer. So, hey, that should tell you something, guys. So, Toyota shows 9.2. Sorry about that. 9.2 MPG. The pump shows 8.66. So, Toyota be lying about the MPG, guys. Come on, man. I'm just kidding, but normally when I do the Phillips at the pump, if there's no headwind, if there's no stop and go traffic or idling, I can get what the pump says or better. So that's why when I do my fuel economy runs, I use a computer because I know it's pretty accurate. A few people had mentioned in the last video that when I towed this trailer with my Wagoneer, I got a lot of sway. And a lot of people say it was because of the single axle, they don't tow well. well with the Tundra, it towed perfect. I didn't feel it sway much of any, really. And it was a windy day. I mean, I could feel it back there, but the truck had the trailer straight as narrow, the whole way down and the whole way back home. So if you are looking at these types of trailers, I think that a tandem axle would be better for SUVs. And this setup was perfect for this small RV. Alrighty, so let's get into this really quickly. So let's take a look at the numbers for the trailer really quickly. So we have a good understanding of how this works. So do you guys see where it says gross vehicle weight rating? 3,860 pounds. That is the maximum weight that this trailer is allowed to go down the road. Now, in order to figure out how heavy it is, you have to look at the yellow sticker, which is the cargo carrying capacity, as I call it. Um, it says the weight of the cargo should never exceed 696 pounds. So what you have to do is you have to take 3,860 pounds and subtract it from 696. That's going to give you 3,164 pounds. So that trailer with nothing in it coming out of the factory weighed 3,164 pounds. Keep in mind, you have propane and batteries that are not included in that weight. Okay. So when you look at the yellow sticker here, I'm gonna show it to you guys here in a second, but before I do that, I did not get it weighed twice. Normally I get the truck weighed, then the trailer. I apologize, I forgot the yellow blocks at the house and I could not find anything at the uh, at the gas station that I could like at least put the trailer on. And so I didn't have enough height to get it off the hitch and I apologize, but there's always next time. I can always get another Tundra at some point and get it weighed again. But I did get two weigh-ins. I did get the black trailer weighed. I cannot wait to go over this with you. You guys are gonna be completely surprised by this. Cannot wait, this is gonna be a good video. You should definitely subscribe if you haven't done so yet. However, let's take a look at this one. So the steer axle and the drive axle were the exact same. So that's 7,080 pounds. That's the amount of the weight of the truck with my family and my gear. So do you guys remember what the GVWR of the truck was? It was 
365 pounds. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take 7,080 pounds and subtract it. So a 20 foot travel trailer with a single axle made this Tundra only have 285 pounds of capacity left over with my family and a little bit of gear. Now, I didn't have any firewood back there because normally when we travel, we put firewood back there. Sometimes we fill up water jugs. Sometimes we have other things with us that run in the truck. Like I put my buy air back there. I, I bring two air compressors with me just because you just never know. But 285 pounds left over is not good. So if you're looking to buy a Toyota Tundra, I would not use this truck primarily for towing because they limit you on your payload. I don't know why Toyota does that. They do it on the lower trim levels too. I think I did a video on a four x two Toyota Tundra. I think that truck had a 6,990 pound GVWR. And if it was four x two, it only had 1,400 pounds of payload. That was it. So it's like they don't want you to tow a big trailer with their pickups. And I can see why, but if you look at Chevy, Ford, Ram, there are examples where you can have over 2,000 pounds of payload capacity. Now it is rare to see that, but they would have about three to 400 pounds more than this truck. But I hope this video was helpful. Stay tuned, I got one more towing video with the Tundra. I did go up a 6% grade. I got the truck weighed and I did a real world fuel economy with the black trailer too. So you don't wanna miss it. If you haven't done so yet, subscribe, like this video, turn on your bell notifications, and I'll see you guys soon.